Hi, this is Dr. Graves from the Cal State Northridge Geography Department. This is a video tutorial to help students work their way through the assignment called the Hollywood Arsonist. This particular version of the video tutorial is for use with ArcGIS Pro and uh, it was filmed in September 20. Um, so what you see on your screen here is um, the file, um, the map file with multiple layers. As you recall, we are testing a hypothesis about the behavior of a serial criminal. According to the hypothesis, the behavior of the criminal should um, if it follows the principle of least effort, um, should help us identify a likely suspect and perhaps a place where we could set up or the law enforcement authorities could set up a uh, checkpoint to look for suspicious people in uh, creepy vans and things like that. So let's turn to the map. I will um, turn off the catalog uh, window there. Um, uh, the suspects, which are largely um, just random addresses uh, to provide some realism, I, I think these are actual fast food joints uh, that I put on the map, except for one, which is uh, one of these points is very near the actual location where the Hollywood arsonists lived. So you could turn those on and off uh, to give you a sense of uh, where those are and then the arsons are a geocoded um, mapped version of all of the addresses that uh, experienced a suspicious fire uh, during the the period of the Hollywood arsonists um, you know sort of reign of terror around Los Angeles um, there are a couple of layers that are turned off that you could turn on the street layer and the highways uh, to get a better uh, sense of that. I'll turn them off for right now. Uh, we have the background layer, the topo and the hillshade map uh, turned on to give you some sense of the background. If you do not have a internet connection, you may not see those layers. And then there's a zip code layer here that is turned off for the moment uh, that we will uh, use momentarily to answer some questions. So let's go back to the way it starts and uh, let's get on with the first task at hand. So the first thing we want to do is to right click. That's a two finger click on a Chromebook or a Mac, a right click to bring open the attribute table and we can select that from the uh, pop-up window here. So the attribute table appears. There is a list of fires here and what we want to do is to uh, once again right click on the fires link column and we want to sort it ascending. Um, that will bring up all of the fires with the letter N in this column and that N indicates that later the authorities determined that these fires did not have a link to that arsonist. So these were either copycat fires or just uh, suspicious fires that happened to have happened during that um, time. So what you need to do is to Put your cursor in the small box left of the one in column uh, object ID. Click and drag. So hold the mouse button down and pull the mouse uh, downward through the list until you have all of the rows of data with an N in the fire links column highlighted. These are the fires that were not linked, and there are 12 of those. 
we want to ignore those during our analysis so we are going to click on the switch selection button at the top of the attribute table so click on that once and note that the uh, selected arsons now are reversed from what you change uh, you selected and now we have uh, 50 of the 62 selected we are going to leave this selection in place for the remainder of the exercise you can uh, click on the X to close the attribute table because we don't need to see that zoom in a little bit and take a look at what we have so now what we want to do is calculate the mean center which is the statistical average of the latitudes and longitudes of the selected fires this is one way of getting a indication of where we suspect that the prime suspect in these these fire would perhaps live the way to calculate the mean center is to click on the analysis tab at, from the top uh, toolbar here and select tools by clicking on that the geo processing window will appear on the right and you will type in mean center into the geo processing window and it will uh, begin searching for the appropriate tool and this is exactly what you want to do um, select mean center by clicking on it once the geo processing tool will then uh, call the tool and we will just have to put in some parameters generally the first time you run this it takes a moment or two okay so the input feature class that you will select from the drop down menu is the arson so we want to know what's the mean center of the arsons the output feature class that um, we're going to give this a name and it uh, will you can put it wherever you would like um, but you should um, know where you are saving this file so we're going to call this just um, mean center with no spaces uh, the weight field we will leave blank the case field we will leave blank and the dimensions field we will leave blank and then just click on the run button and after a moment or so um, we have a new uh, feature on the map uh, near where is it Briar Summit open space preserve and that is the mean center we'll zoom back out just a little bit and I'm going to turn the arsons layer off and click on uh, once again map tab select the measure tool click on it once and notice that it's in uh, planar and metric format and that we will leave it set on that and your task is to measure the distance between uh, the mean center so we click on it once and the nearest suspect so there's a suspect at uh, 5100 meters and then there's one at 5400 meters and then there's one even closer so um, your task is to click on that gas can that represents a suspect that is closer and then report the data that you got in um, your learning management tool so if this was the closest suspect you would you would type in 5380 and now we're finished with that so close the measure tool 
and we will go back to the analysis tab bring up the tools button once again and this time uh, we're going to ask for a standard deviational ellipse and I, I only typed in standard div and it uh, figured out what I wanted. We want a directional distribution, a standard deviational ellipse. Uh, once again, our input feature is arsons, and the output feature, uh, we will call that arsons SDE. For simplicity's sake, we will leave the ellipse size at one standard deviation and uh, leave the weight and case fields blank. What this, um, and then click run, what this tool does is to put a, a, um, an oval around the uh, arsons, and I will turn those back on, and uh, roughly 68% of the arsons should fall within one standard distance of the mean center and you see that the mean center as is at the center of the standard deviational ellipse and so these that are outside this circle are more than one standard distance like a standard deviation away from the uh, mean center of the arson. You should stop and answer some questions uh, regarding what you have at this point. The fact that the deviational ellipse is stretched in the direction that it is stretched and it's not more circular tells you that there is some skewing, a directional skewing in the data. It suggests that the arsonist had to travel um, further than he or she would have liked uh, in order to find uh, victims or targets uh, for the arson. So when you see skewing in data, then a lot of times you have to use a different statistic. And in this case, we're going to use yet another statistic of central tendency, and this is the median. So click once again on tools, and we will look for the median center of the arson. So click on median center. The input feature class once again is arsons, and we will call this, um, well, you can call it whatever you want, uh, but median center, no spaces, and we will leave the weight and the case field and the attribute field all blank and click run. Now we have a second dot on the map, and this time it appears, uh, at least on my screen, in yellow. Um, and the last of the task that you have to do is to once again use the measure tool to, we want to clear the results from the previous um, measuring, uh, we want to measure from here Two, and I'm going to turn the major streets and highways layer on, um, we will measure to the nearest intersection. So, um, of and these are a major street intersection. Here's a minor street intersection at 276 meters away. And then to the nearest of the suspects. There, there one is I'm going to measure to a more distant suspect and you will note that it is 2,561 meters away. At this point you are finished with the analysis and you uh, only have to answer a few questions to complete the exercise. This ends the video tutorial for the Hollywood Arsonist.